Today's podcast interview is with Galen Ekonomov, and he came to this country, listen to this, with $11 in his pocket, and he's already closed three wholesale deals. This is an incredible story. You're going to love it. Let's jump right in. Glenn, I am so excited you are on the podcast today. This is going to be an incredible conversation. You've got an incredible story, one unlike any other conversation we've had on this podcast. So welcome. Thank you, Brent. It's been a dream for me. Listen, you are 6,526 miles away from where you grew up, mm -hmm. which is Ruse, Bulgaria. That's right. And how many how many property owners in the Phoenix area have you talked to in the last 10 months? In the last 10 months, I've talked to between eight to 10,000 property owners. Eight to 10,000 yourself? Yes. yes. Not a virtual assistant? Nope. Not a hire? Not text message? Nope. Like actual had conversations? Actual. So that's a great question. Actual conversation. No, like it was, would you like to sell? Yes, no, maybe. Right. All those responses. So... Um, actual conversations with people in the last 10 months, worm solid leads, we'll, we're probably looking at 70. 70 leads. 60, 70 leads, but yes. But conversations. Conversation, yes, conversations. But you've had more than 70 conversations with property owners. Yes, but it was, they didn't lead to anything. Right. It was just no. No, I'm just talking about... You called up a property owner yes. out of the blue yes. and had a conversation with them. Yes. Because you call for, you make calls for how many hours a day? So, uh, I, I want to kind of set the table for this conversation because, I mean, you are out there. You're putting in all the work. If there is a poster child for massive imperfect action, your face is on it. You know what I mean? You and a few others in our in our tribe that I can mention, but you are there every single day putting in the work, building the skills. And, and listen, real estate investing comes down to conversations and offers. That's it. Conversation and offers, either with the property owners or the people that represent them. And then that leads down to making an offer, whether it's a cash offer, a creative offer, a conventional offer, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But that is real estate investing. I've got it right there on the wall. It's all it's it's in neon conversations and offers. And you're doing this every single day. So I want to pick your brain for everybody that's real apprehensive about getting on the phones for the first time and they've never had a conversation with anybody about their property and how that goes. I really want to um, you know, share your story, but also more importantly, I want to pull from you all the experience that you've had and put it into the audience so that they can just start taking action right away. Perfect. So were you scared at first? Oh my God, man. Absolutely. I was so scared. I had all those limiting beliefs. I have an accent. It's an Eastern European ra accent, Russian accent, whatever, but I had to do it. Why? Because what do you I, mean? Because I had not no, no other option. I've been through you, the... There's plenty of options. True. I've been through the W2 world brand. Okay. And I just... I did well. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was... First of all, I was never able to find in the W2 world a person that was an actual leader. Right. Not managers, leaders. And at the end of, let's say... I, I worked as a mortgage loan officer for, for two and a half years, and I did very, very well. And at the end of the day, I was never able to find a leader that was going to show me the path. How can I be successful sure. at doing mortgages? Yeah. So I would get very frustrated at, at the very end. Yes, I did make really, really good money. I'm like, there's what, What's really good money? Um, for, I remember my last paycheck doing mortgages in 2022, and that was my last job. I made I, it was a check for twenty two thousand dollars. That was the in a month. Uh, we, it was, it was a monthly check, but it but it, uh, it accumulated with the units. What did you make? What did you make for the year? Uh, I made just under a hundred thousand. Okay, awesome. Yep. And then why'd you stop that? Because. I know it sounds cliche, but it just wasn't about the money, Brent. I right. really, I was looking for something more that's more, it's going to satisfy me more. Fulfilling. I, more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I, I, I left my mother. I left my grandmother. I left all my friends. I left the whole culture. 
to come here and actually do something about it. And my mother sacrificed a lot for me to be here. Yeah. And just staying comfortable at a W-2 job where I had to listen to a manager that's been there for 22 years, and that is the reason why he's manager, not because mm. of skills, but because he's been there for, for 22 years. It didn't sit right with me, and, and I'm like, I, I have to – there was something in my gut. So, so what's the perspective, right? You you grew up in Ruse, uh, Bulgaria. Right. What perspective do you have of America? Like, why move here? Um, I is it like a movie? Does people I, portray it like a like it's you know what I mean? I used to watch a lot of movies and a lot of shows, and all those movies and shows are portraying United States as the country where, first of all, everything is possible, which is completely true. Mm -hmm. But then, oh man, you can get go and pick up hundred dollar bills left and right. It's very easy here. Right. And um, also at the time, actually, a fun fact: I played semi-professional basketball for 14 years. Yeah. So basketball equals NBA. Sure. I used to wake up 2, 3 in the morning to watch Chicago Bulls. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I'll go to America, and I don't have a plan, but I got to figure it out how one day I'm going to play basketball there. So well, I, I don't know the... I, I don't know anything about how you grew up in Bulgaria. Is, is there not a lot of uh, jobs or a lot of uh, opportunity for making a ton or, or, or achieving your dreams or do you have to go somewhere else to do that so yeah i mean you know and this is just my opinion i hope some folks from bulgaria will actually listen but there's really two cities from the whole country where we can make something happen and that's okay. sofia which is the capital and then you have plovdiv uh and i when i was young we did not have any money to travel to even my own country right so the only thing that i knew was Russia, Bulgaria. And then in Russia, Bulgaria, it did not, we did not really have role models to, we had the wrong role models to follow, like mm -hmm. when it comes to career. And I was so confused with what's going on. And then I love my grandmother dearly. This is the most important, most important person in my life. But she did one mistake that I started realizing today, and she was actually giving me money. Galencho, don't worry about it, honey. You can you just enjoy your life now. You can actually like work later. And that's I'm 18, 19 years old, and my grandmother is, is giving me money because she's like, please don't leave, stay with me. I'm like, Got it. now I'm realizing that. But back in the days, it was actually something normal. In, in fact, it's still normal for some people out there. Sure. So that's just then. You know, I'm like United States. I watch basketball. I, I watch shows. And then I had the opportunity at the time I was going to university. And then I heard of this J1 work and travels program in United States mm -hmm. where you can go and work for four months yep. from May until September. And uh, you can make money and come back and, and do well. Awesome. And that's, you know, that's when I first time I experienced the United States. And ever since I st stepped on this ground, I absolutely I've been loving this country with all my heart. It's an amazing country to be in. Well, we're better to have you here. So that's awesome. Absolutely incredible. So um, you've talked to 10,000 property owners about and um, we'll break down a specific deal. But uh, about how much have you made in the last because you really st kicked this off about 10 months ago. Right. And so how much have you made? Because when you're, and this is just for everybody, when you're getting started and you're really proactive, you don't have a huge marketing budget, um, what happens is it usually takes about 90 to 120 days to really start building the momentum and really seeing um, the the fruits of your labor, you know, really closing on those deals and getting the, the, the checks or the wires into your account. So you're really just on the you know really starting to build the momentum how, how much have you made in that 10 months so in 10 months i i, I i've made just under sixty thousand. awesome so if i do the math right every time that anybody answers and even hangs up on you or says no i don't want to sell you make six dollars that's a great perspective i guess right i really never thought that way yeah well listen you know i the way that i used to think about it is i my goal was I, I always lived in this world where 
Um, it was like doctors and attorneys and all these things have like an hourly, you know, number attached to them. And especially attorneys, they were like $400 an hour, 500. Oh, this person's a thousand dollars. I always wanted to make a thousand dollars an hour mm -hmm. by picking up the phone and calling property owners that I would just drive around. I was just driving for dollars, find the, find the rough looking houses, call up the owner. And, and, and that was my goal. I wanted to make a thousand dollars an hour mm -hmm. ended up the last year before I started hiring hiring the 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 my cold callers from uh, call motivated sellers mm -hmm. um was fifteen hundred dollars an hour is what i was making wow making those calls but it took me four years mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. it took me 10 years of being on the phones because i was calling for real estate as a real estate agent before that so um i've talked to forty five thousand property owners but it took a long time to really build that skill mm -hmm. and a lot of that skill and i'm sure that you're you you know this is the mindset yes the, 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 mind, the mindset and the and you can't get the, the mindset um, and the confidence without building the skill. So you it, it's like a, it's it's a chicken and an egg situation because you want to be very confident, but you can't be as confident as you want to unless you do the work. Right. So you got to get the reps in. Yes. And I think that's what stops a lot of people. So yes. if you're speaking to somebody, well, you are speaking to to everybody that's watching this and listening to this and they they're afraid of the phones. What would you say? You have to do it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's they have it's to do scary. it. They have to do it if they want to find great opportunities and they don't have the budget. Right. Yes. So, you know, for me, at the beginning of the podcast, I actually mentioned there was no other opportunity for me. I was all in. I burned all the bridges. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have all the hatred upon me. Why are you calling me the nose? And the, you know, I started imagining the most negative thing possible. Yeah. And I'm like, great. I have no other opportunity. Get on the phones. Oh, and, me too, brother. And then once you get on the phones, you know, you're going to hear everything. But then at some point, you're building that thick skin to where you really doesn't matter like anymore. Right. I knew it in my heart, Brent, that whichever homeowner mm -hmm. works with me, I am going to pour my heart and soul for that owner to have the best experience and the best transaction they ever did in real estate. And that's, that's what was in my that's mind. That's it. And that was in my but mind. But you got to always, you always have to focus on the people that you can help. Yes. The people that you can't help, you're yes. never going to run into. You're never going to have, you know, uh, another conversation with them typically. Yes. And I read something when I was um, getting started Glenn, that that really helped. It was it was a it was um, this psych, it, it, it was a portion of a psychology book, and it talked about rejection, mm -hmm. and it talked about how um, in our brains we're very tribal, okay, right, and mm -hmm. we never want. There's something in our brain that doesn't want rejection because that means that we'll get kicked out of the tribe, mm. right, and mm. and so there's something very fundamental there, and they say that if you can. Um, if, if, if that can be decreased, if that portion of your brain, uh, can be shrunk down mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's physically shrunk or you know, whatever, if it's just magic or whatever, I don't know. But if, it, if you can, if you can turn that part of it off and if you can just go out there and, and, and speak to enough people and get rejected enough, um, you're unstoppable. Absolutely. You're unstoppable because, because most people won't. Yes. Most people will not. Most people are so frightened of talking to strangers mm -hmm. on the phone mm -hmm. uh, that it really prevents them from, from going out and achieving their goals when it comes to real estate investing, mm -hmm. making money in real estate, um, uh, wholesaling certainly. And if you and, and, I, and I keep mentioning this, and I want to I just want to make this very clear. You know, I, I mentioned if you don't have a budget, if you don't if you don't have a budget to have people call you, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And unless and, unless you build a reputation that you are the person that buys rough looking houses or or buys a lot of properties, unless mm -hmm. you build up that reputation mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. and being loud mm -hmm. and people just bring you the deals, yep. then you have to be proactive. Yep. You have to talk to strangers. Yep. You have to shrink that part of your brain that says, if I get rejected, I'm going to be kicked out of the tribe and that's going to make me feel bad. Yep. Right? Yep. And there's some people that are natural at it. I was not. It sounds like you weren't either. Natural <laughs> no, at the no. rejection. <laughs> my, my, my wife, Jacqueline, was like, what are you 
what are you talking like well, you're sounding so weird like what's going on but i but i was completely new i didn't know what I w- so what is it like now what is your brain like now so after all after talking to ten thousand people yeah so and by the way i want to clarify that because probably some people are like wait a minute how did he talk ten thousand people 10,000 people, some of the conversations were, hello, are you looking to sell? Right. No, no, leave me alone. Yeah. That's that's a person, right? Yep. Um, now, after being rejected so many times, uh, being called at anything you can like imagine, uh, you know, I mean, you nasty immigrant, this and that, scammer, like, and all that, I just smile. I'm like, sure. that that's okay. It you're, doesn't get to you? You're not, go- it does if it happens, <laughs> if, Sometimes cold calling, it's actually a Russian roulette. Like uh, you're going to start your first five conversations are going to be, you know, no, I'm not interested. But then on the next day, the first five are going to be, who the hell are you? Leave me alone. You got him scammer. Those are the times when you have to remember why you actually started doing this. And then Brent, I... You know, this morning actually, I was I was reflecting on something, and that's a I think that's just a perfect association with cold calling and you being scared of doing things. You have to do something that you have never done before, mm-hmm. in order for you to be somewhere you have never been before. Of course, you have to cold call to find a motivated seller with an ugly house mm-hmm. that will allow you to help them. For you to make the money you've never seen before. That's it. It's just, that's what and it the, is. The interesting thing about our business is you have a lot of property owners yep. that need help with their problems. They have personal problems with their properties, yep. whether it be financial problems, mm-hmm. whether it be um, that they have emotional problems with that mm-hmm. property, something happened in that property that they want to get rid of, or whether it just be that the condition of the property, they just can't keep up with it anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are the three main buckets of distress. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times people are just don't know who to turn to. Mm-hmm. They don't have real estate investor family members. Mm-hmm. They don't have people that... Uh, you know, they're afraid of realtors because they're embarrassed about the condition of the property. Mm-hmm. The property, you know, they don't want pictures of it on the internet. Yep. You know what I mean? They're, they're just really embarrassed, so they're closed off. And then you mm-hmm. walk into their life mm-hmm. and you say, hey, listen, let me help you with this mm-hmm. with this problem. Let me solve this problem. And 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 then they work with you. And so it's, many opportunities so like many. that out there. It's just crazy. And it is. Those were my, those were my, pretty much my, my ideas oh i don't want to talk to realtors i'm like why not you know i'm trying to pull and they were embarrassed they're like i have a room (laughs) that one person bren had a bedroom Mm -hmm. i'm not exaggerating i I wish i had a picture Mm -hmm. full of mail oh yeah full of mail i'm like how is that even possible bro joshua my acquisition manager yeah went on an appointment yesterday (laughs) yeah 1400 square foot house yeah nine great danes living in it Oh my god. <laughs> With five people. I mean, like just th- th- this is not this and, and these are typical appointments. I mean, wow. these are these are some these are the, the these are the properties that we're talking about. Nine and grain so, Danes are pretty much nine more human beings because oh, a grain sure. Dan is a hundred and twenty yeah. pounds and it's four five feet tall, like when they that jump has a bunch of fur. Much <laughs> and doesn't go to the bathroom in the toilet. <laughs> That's yeah. right. There you go. Um, we we make a wholesaling real estate sounds so glamorous. It's it is yeah, right. Sure. No, but I mean honestly, that, I mean that's what it is. I mean those it, are it, opportunities. If you, if you block out all the people that'll never do business with you, and you yep. don't worry about them, and you just focus on the people that will do business with mm-hmm. you or potentially do business with you, and really mm-hmm. nurture those relationships, really find out and discover what's going on with them and what their goal is. Yep. And if their goal is that they want to sell their property with speed and convenience, then they got to give us their price. Yes. Uh, Our price. I'm sorry. They got to give us our price. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, then we can either buy those properties, we can flip those properties, we can hold those properties, or we can assign those properties. Mm -hmm. And so wholesaling kind of gets, is under the umbrella of, oh, you just assign deals. That's not it. Wholesaling is the art of finding discounted properties. Yep. That's it. Yep. That, that, that's what that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And so um, if you want to build the skills of finding discounted properties, you got to talk to a lot of people. 
or you got to have a decent budget for people to call you. Yep. And that's where that's really the evolution. Because mm -hmm. I see in your business, you can see it now, and you're, you're, you're getting into some lead Zolo leads and some other things, which is more of a paper lead from an internet standpoint. But you start out and you grind it out and you talk to a bunch of people and you build the skills and you understand the numbers and you understand what you have to offer. You understand repair costs. You understand the process and earnest money and the title companies and, and every cash buyers and the whole thing. Yep. Um, and then you're able to and you feel good investing into people calling you mm -hmm. because you've got the skills of negotiation. Mm -hmm. You've got the skills of your presentation. You've got the skills of your lead follow-up. You've got the skills of working with the right people to get the deals across the finish line when it comes to title and escrow or closing attorneys. And so um, that's when you feel, can feel comfortable investing. And that's when all, everything opens up. Mm -hmm. You've seen my team. Yes. You work with my team. Yes. You're, you're running around door knocking. We call you up to see if you can help us with some buyer appointments or, uh, you know, throw the, a lockbox on a property or whatever. Because you're always, I mean, you batteries come included with you. So yeah. it's awesome. And thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, once you can start doing the paper cut, pay-per-click leads and the TV commercial leads and the radio leads and some of these other things, all of a sudden people are calling you to buy their house yeah. and you just went through 10,000, 15,000 conversations mm -hmm. initiating it, mm -hmm. mostly getting rejected, 90% mm -hmm. getting rejected mm -hmm. on those calls. And now people are calling you. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually, that's the promise. I mean, that's, that's, that's the 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 gold at the end of the rainbow. You know Everything I mean? completely switches to you because I just been experiencing it in the last week, and I'm like, I talk to people, I'm like, would you like to sell? And they're saying yes, and they're telling me their whole story. I'm like, oh my god, it's it's so not much easy. easier though. It's it's not easy. Obviously, it's not it's simple. It's not easy because right. you have to have the skills to actually op make these people open up to you. Right. But I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is amazing. Like, they're actually, I don't have to beg them to talk to me. Right. They're actually opening up and telling them what their problem is and I, how can I help them. Yeah, I, I love it. And, and, and you've been through it all. You've been through people telling you the, the worst things about you. Oh, yeah. And I assume they assume that you're, you're in some other country. You're not you're their neighbor. You know what I mean? you yes. got to go through all of that. Yes. And you still are cl you're, you're still closing deals. You're still finding opportunities and you're still being able to build up your budget to be able to have people that already want to sell their property and just talk to them. Yep. And that's how this business switches. That's the, that's the flip over in, in this business is when people start calling you mm -hmm. and it's awesome. I yep. mean, it's just really exciting. Super exciting. This is the best business in the world guys. It's just, so I think that, you know, when you're, when you're having those tough days, um, do you tap into that thought that you mentioned at the start of the podcast that, you know, I came to America and I had a dream and I wanted to have the freedom and I wanted to have everything that this country offers. And uh, it, I can't, I have too much potential and too much opportunity to just crumble when somebody tells me something nasty. Recently. Yes. Um, I've, I think of my mother, mm -hmm. how much she sacrificed. I think of, you know, how many times I would tell people, me just being a straight shooter, I'm like, guys, stop whining. You have all these opportunities. Right. But then, you know, that, that, that would happen to me. And I was like, Galen, you, you're in the best country in the world, man. This is actually, Brent, the thing that really keeps me going because – Guys, you, this is the only country where literally you can exchange real estate within just a signature. Mm -hmm. Like, here we go. This is this is your property now, right? right. And because back home, I don't know, I, I've never purchased a home there. We've never purchased a home where I'm not coming from. You know, we were barely scraping by. You know, my stories, we used, to, my grandmother, we used to wake up and she would come and tell me, hey, would you please take a look at your coins to see if we can, we'll be able to pay the, the, the electric bills because my pension is not in yet. So thinking of this, I'm like, oh, Galen, you're tired? Oh, I mean, guys, you know, but th this is just me. Oh, you're tired? Oh, somebody called you a nasty word? Well, do you want to go back and try the other side? No. Right. Absolutely not. Right. So this is what. So that's the advice you'd give to people that are getting, you know, make those worried about these conversations, worried about getting on the uh, on the calls, getting over that fear. You, you know what, Brian? Actually, tap into the tap into the other side. You have to 
it's a cliche, right? It's an older podcast and older books. You need to find your why. Mm -hmm. You need to figure it out. What is this thing that is making you wake up every single day and you have to go in and, and, and conquer the world? For example, you have kids. Yeah. How would you like your kids to perceive you as they're growing up? Sure. Are they going to perceive you as, well, my father, you know, the, the second something became so hard, he just quit or he kept pushing through it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, well, my father really wasn't, he was telling me, you can be everything you want. You can be the best in the world. Father, but why you're not? Right. And this is one, one example. Is it your wife? Is it your mother? Is it your family that you want to retire? Mm -hmm. It's really figuring out this thing that you believe so hard into that you have to accomplish that this is the thing. Put it in a wall, write it down somewhere, yeah. notes in the, uh, the bathroom, toilet even. <laughs> I was about to say toilet. But it's you have to know your why. Yeah. That's it. Well, and, and that's your legacy. Your legacy is your example. The example, good or bad. Yes. People always think, oh, legacy, it's all positive. It's just certainly not. There are there are more bad legacies than good. That's that's for sure. I mean that unfortunately. The the name of my the name of my business brand is Break the Cycle. Yeah. Why? I am the one male mm -hmm. in our uh, heritage, uh, sure. whatever Lineage. tree. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that have to break the cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, uh-uh. His brother, uh-uh. My, uh, you know, my uncle from my mother's side, uh-uh. My grandfather, uh-uh. Like, the last two, three, well, two generations were not stable men. Yeah. And, you know, me watching Pat Patrick Bed David, sort of shameless plug here. Uh, hey, w right now, where, where you're at is... Um, would you allow yourself, let's say I'm 30 years old now, yeah. when my daughter, for example, I don't have a daughter yet, but for example, when, when, uh, when, when my daughter is 30 years old and she dates a guy, what guy I want my daughter to, to date? Is it going to be a guy like someone like me, like, which is, you know, pushing and, 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 and working hard and reading right. and, and just doing all those things? Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be a guy that's like, wow, well, yeah, man, I mean, life is great. Mm -hmm. I can just go and work W-2. So those are the things that I'm constantly thinking sure. about, and that's what just keeps me focused on the goal. Like, you need to do very uncomfortable things. You need to leave the comfort zone. Galen, speaking to myself, you need to leave your comfort zone for you to accomplish something. Yeah, growth hurts. Yes. Oh, a lot. It does. Yes. So let's break down a deal. Love it. My So I've closed total those under $60,000 or three deals. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, um, I actually closed my first two deals at the same day. It was just amazing. I know. Uh, but my first deal came from, um, it was a, um, a, a, a primary owner list. Okay. High equity. Okay. On batch so leads. Owner occupied. Owner occupied. On, uh, you know, I put a list on. Uh, so on what? Batch. They've owned the property for a while. Free and clear for for it for at least ten years. They've or owned. on this one, I believe it was twenty years. They've owned it for twenty years. Correct. They don't have a mortgage on it. Correct. They live in the property. Yes. Any age of houses? The age of houses was nineteen ninety three or older. Okay, so older properties. Yes. Uh, size of house. Size, I believe, I put under eighteen hundred square feet or something like that. Probably two thousand. Pro call it two thousand. Sure. I think it it was you know all the if list. You're, if you're following my uh, instructions. Actually, yes, no, sh for sure, and so I two thousand square feet, thirty years between or older. eighteen and and, and twenty four okay. square feet were my uh, yeah. lists. Nice. Yep. And so um, you called them up? Yes. What'd they say? That was my second lead when I started Brent. Uh -huh. That lead, I've been fo I followed up with this guy for four months. Okay. And however, th what did he tell me? By the way, shout out Chad Coulter on your team, your junior Coulter. Sorry, that was a very different accent. It's good. Shout, shout out to Chad. Uh, I liked that. The guy. I was like, that's what he calls him? That's Chad that's Coulter, <laughs> your junior acquisition manager. Yeah. I, I, I love this guy. He helped me so much to change my life. 
uh, including Ryan, of course. Yeah. Uh, the guys, like, uh, you know, the guy opened up and kind of tell me, yeah, I'm originally from North Dakota. I'm like, hey, would you like to, would you consider an offer in your property? Well, not, not right now. Well, what, what do you have going on? And he said, well, I have some business to take care of, which is I really want to pinpoint on the business to take care of because yep. they all have business to take care of. Yep. And it took me four months to realize what kind of business that was. But then the, the topic went, what was you know, the, business? Uh, the personal business was he was kind of squatter and he had to clean all that because he thought that he needed to clean everything before he can sell his house. And he kept pushing it for four months. Oh, I have personal things hoarder, to order. Hoarder, not squatter. Right? Uh, sorry, hoarder, yes. Okay. Well, he felt like that he was squatting be, be, because... In his own house? All rooms were filled out with stuff, and he was sure. literally sleeping on a couch in his kitchen. I'm like, because yeah. everything else was just stuff everywhere. And, you know, he just, he knew that he had to do it, but he never did it. Mm -hmm. So it took me four months to realize, what is that business that you have to take care of? And he would not share. Yeah. I'm like, you know, is there anything I can help with that person, with that business that you have going on? But initially, there, this is very typical with people that collect. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll call them collectors, uh, collect a lot of things. Um, they, they, they don't know mm -hmm. or they don't feel comfortable getting rid of things. Yes. And so to move all of that stuff, yep. even though they know they need to, yep. takes a little bit of time. Takes takes a lot of nurturing, for sure. It took me, I mean, four months. I'm not sure if those four months he was actually getting rid of things. But just to continue my story, is when, when the, the, the very first phone call, we went on the story, of like, where is he from? Yeah. And he said, North Dakota. I'm like, one of my best friends is from, from North Dakota, Chad. Mm -hmm. And then he opened up, and then he actually was not comfortable speaking on the phone with me, mm -hmm. but was very comfortable texting. Yep. And we kept texting and texting and texting until one day, four or five months later, he's like, well, uh, you know, is this deal a cash offer and there's no realtors? And then I went through explaining our value in the market. Sure. It's it's a cash deal. It's me and you. You're not going to have 35 walk-ins, people asking you questions why there are 1,350,000 papers in your bedroom. Right. I, it, that doesn't matter to me. I, I All I wanted to make sure is I make this super, uh, super easy for him, yeah. you know. And I've built such a relationship with the seller brand. We're still texting. I mean, when I was visiting him to uh, help him move, because I also helped him move. I moved couches in 120 degrees. I did everything for this guy. Awesome. Uh, Jackie, my wife, will bake him cookies and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and um, I helped him out, and, and he moved. And at the, at the very end, like you said, there was something about you, man. There were seven people like you here in my home. Seven. Mm-hmm. Actually, a guy is coming tomorrow, but there was something about you that was different, and I thank you so much for everything, and I feel very comfortable that I worked with you. And we had lunch. Yeah. The day he was leaving, he moved to Tennessee. Yep. And Oh, wow. That's a big move. Yes. Did he take a bunch of his stuff or no? Not much, Brent. He, he just left it. He literally left. That's he, what I find. You know, a lot of he them, left. They, they, they take a lot of time. For anybody that's, that, that is speaking with people that collect a lot, um, they, they, they take a long time to make the decision, but when they do, usually they leave most of it. Just you deal with it. Yep. Yep. That was the case. He's like, Hey, would you mind if I leave my mother's closet, which was, I mean, some really sturdy wood closets. I'm like, whatever you don't need, just leave it behind. Yep. I got you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. He was, he'd never heard of service like that before. Right. He's like, well, realtors will come in and I have to do everything myself. I'm like, I will be there tomorrow and we're going to move all the couches together. Yep. Awesome. And so what did you lock it up for? I locked up the property for, um, uh, oh, my God, 148500 That's right. And what did you sell for? And I sold it for one hundred eighty. One hundred eighty thousand. 180000 You made how much? Uh, what's the math on it? Thirty. So I, I netted 33500 why didn't you net the... Uh, because that went yeah. to, to your company because I squat up with, with you folks. Jeremy found a buyer oh, for Jeremy me. Oh, Jeremy sold it? And, you know, we... So how much it. did you make? 33500 Come on, ring that thing. <laughs> I love it. 
from one conversation. Yeah. But it's not just one conversation because you talk to 10,000 people. Yes. And you did three deals and people go like, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. that is no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to have I'm going to hire somebody for five dollars mm-hmm. an hour or six dollars and eight hours uh, or eight dollars an hour. Why didn't you do that? Because you are. You cannot put your heart in someone in someone else's body. Right. And I knew that mm-hmm. I, I, I also knew I'm not in a position to hire people because I have to, I don't have the skills to make these people part of my team. Mm-hmm. I did not have the skills to train these people to call for me. Plus, I wanted to put in the work first yep. and then I can, you know, one day when the time comes, I'm going to be comfortable hiring somebody and I can train them and show them all the processes and introduce them to Brent Brand Daniels That's processes right. and scripts. Awesome. Yep. Absolutely incredible. And then you closed a, a two in one day, and uh, you got your pipeline going. You're starting to to take some inbound leads. Yes, uh, which is really exciting. Which which probably uh, <laughs> you're like, wow, I didn't know this existed. But yeah. here's one thing, Brent. Yeah. Another very uncomfortable thing. Yeah. Because I'm calling somebody. You know, I've done business only in Phoenix, Maricopa County, yep. Arizona. Yep. And now I'm calling in Georgia. I'm calling in Louisiana, sure. in Mississippi. And most of the people like will be, oh, my God, who are the buyers? What is this? What is that? And I don't know. Yeah. I just want to find people. Yeah, you're that in the ha- tribe. You're in the tribe, so people will help you sell those. We're going to squat yeah. up, and that's yeah. you know the, one of the most important things is you have to find your group. That's it. You have to find your tribe. That's step number one. Find people doing this business. Absolutely. If, if you don't, if you're not surrounded by people that are absolutely doing this business, yep. you'll find something else to do. That's right. You will. You'll you'll stay reading books, listening podcasts, watching YouTube, until you commit to a community, or yep. we call it the Rhino Tribe, yep. uh, in our in our community. Yep. Um, you're just you're on an island by yourself, and it just doesn't make any sense. It's hard, guys. Yeah. And actually, I, I did it initially. That's how I'm always being structured if you're going to do something do it yourself and it was a huge mistake because have i not joined the tribe one of the best things that that i've done i wouldn't know chad and yeah. chad would i wouldn't know chad is originally from north dakota right and that north dakota state would not lead me to connecting with a guy that at some four months down the road i helped mm-hmm. and i made thirty three thousand five hundred dollars right so you have to find your group 100% sure. Yeah. It's all about who has the most friends. Yes. You know, at the end of the day. And, yeah. and, and, and you're loved. I mean, you're a huge leader in the group, and uh, people really love you. You're on the, uh, all, the support calls. You're in the live lead call every, every, every single day. You're in that, uh, the office hours making calls with Stephanie Hunt and uh, R- Rodolfo, Rodolfo, Stephanie Hunt, Mike and Reyes. All, shout everybody, out. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and then people just jump in. So, um, guys, you don't have to do it alone, and uh, we invite you into the Rhino Tribe. But, uh, Glenn, how can people get, uh, get in touch with you? Uh, Instagram is going to be the best way. It's my first name, G-A-L-E-N, mm-hmm. for Galen. And then last name is I-K-O, N as a Nancy, O, M as a Mary, O, V as in Victor. Reach out. Um, I do post on social media. I did actually post my 90-day challenge wholesaling real estate every single day i broke down the numbers i'm showing the good and the bad Mm -hmm. and uh, you know sometimes i do share my my morning routine and please reach out any questions you might have mental deals whatever that is i would i would love to help you out because i know what it is to actually have help awesome love you you're the best I love you too. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. And that is it. What an incredible guys reach out, reach out to Glenn. He is an incredible resource. And if you need any inspiration and see what this, this uh, business is all about, he is documenting it every single day. And remember this, this is not just a one path fits all business. All right. You really got to look at it in four parts. You got to look at your experience level. You got to look at your schedule. You got to look at your budget and you got to look at what market you're in or what market you want to go after. And if you're looking for a customized plan, a customized blueprint based on your, those four factors from a 
uh, from a tribe and a company that has done this for the last 10 years. I invite you to go to wholesalinginc.com, wholesalinginc.com, and uh, apply for the tribe. Go and get on a conversation with us, and, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, give you a plan for that and, and see um, if you're the right fit for the tribe. But that's it. That's it for Wholesaling Inc. I am Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, encouraging you to always go out there and talk to people. Till next time. Love you guys. See ya.